Good morning. Uh, welcome to day two of the Vigo Way, 21 days of Vigo. Um, how are you feeling today? Uh, I'm guessing, if it's anything like me, I'm feeling a little bit... I woke up with a really dry throat. I had to down a glass of water straight away. Like I said uh, before, you do need to drink loads more water. Um, I've been awake for about an hour now, and I've had two pints of water and also one pint of electrolyte drink. Uh, but I have done exercise as well. I've just finished doing some um, HIT exercise. So high, is it high intensity interval training or high interval, high intensity? Pfft, I don't know, these weird names for all these. I've done exercise basically um, for about half an hour. Um, so that might, might maybe need more water. Um, but anyway, Make sure you've got water. If you haven't downed a pint of water this morning already, do it now, um, and then make your electrolyte drink. Hopefully you've got some coffee on the brew, um, making a keto coffee to give you that fat boost. You don't have to have that. Like I'm not having one first thing today, I might have one later. If you don't like coffee, there are other versions. You can make um, teas. Uh, if you Google keto, uh, I think it's called bulletproof tea or bulletproof coffee. That's what they call it when you put um, coconut oil in it um so yeah so welcome to day two well done um well done for getting this far stick with it uh you're probably gonna feel a little bit you can go one of two ways today you could either start to feel really good from having less carbs in your system and you feel really light and fresh um or you could start to have a keto flu already where you're getting headaches and you're getting a little bit achy and you just feel a bit miserable but it's not the diet killing you, it's just keto flu. So keep your fluids up, take your vitamins, take your electrolyte drinks, and you will feel better. It's gonna take a few days. Um, and obviously, don't snack on extra carbs if you feel hungry. If you feel hungry and you snack on extra carbs, that's gonna keep you in a perpetual state of keto flu. So um, just, you know, if you do need to snack and have extra things in between meals, have something sensible like, um, almonds or peanuts or half an avocado or um, maybe a few berries um, something that's low in carb it's better to go over your carb limit with something very small in carbs than go over your carb limit with something really high in carbs like a massive slice of pizza because that's just going to bug you up basically so um, today we're going to do breakfast lunch and dinner again um, the first for breakfast today we've got a berry smoothie so that's going to be nice so you can follow me to the kitchen I'm just gonna get my water because i'm really thirsty um, so this smoothie is really easy to make well i think it is um, and we have a wealth of ingredients to go in it the smoothie works out at just um i think it's six grams of carbs of net carbs when you take away the fiber Again, if you search the Vigo Way Berry Smoothie on um, not YouTube, My Fitness Pal, you'll be able to see it there and you can add it yourself so you don't have to worry. That's if you use the same ingredients I do. Okay, let's get started. So here are our ingredients for the smoothie and it's going to be really hilarious doing this one-handed. Um, but we'll see, I might have to stop the video a couple of times. So we've got protein powder, um, we've got some mixed frozen berries from Aldi, 80 grams, I've already put them out there, um, coconut oil for fat, um, we're going to have some um, milled flax seed or uh, the linseed, other people call them, some water, some um, hemp milk or almond milk, whatever you want, and we've got some sweetener. Um, now this, one thing I want to say is on the back of this, it does say that the carb limit, uh, well sorry, the carbs are per serving 2.5 carbs. Uh, I read an article online saying you don't need to count these carbs because they are um, sugar alcohol and it doesn't kick people out of ketosis. Some people argue it and say it does. Um, this is because it's got erythritol in it, it's nothing to do with the stevia. Stevia will not kick out of ketosis. Um, but some people say erythritol might do. Uh, so far it hasn't for me, and I follow the instructions from uh, online, the, from the article. Um, I don't add the carbs into the recipe because they, they're not utilized by the body, they go straight out of your wheat. Um, I don't know the science of it, but just experiment. If you find that 
if you find you're still not in ketosis in a week or so, um, just try stevia or try something else. You will need a smoothie machine. Hopefully you have a smoothie machine. But we're going to put all of this in. So first we're going to start off with some water. Um, I'd say about half a cup of water or a cup of water. Um, and then we're going to put the berries in. This is such an easy, quick breakfast to make. To be honest, I make this most of the time because if I'm in a rush, um, and there's, not, uh, there's other versions of this movie that I'll show you later in the week, but um, it's just so quick and easy and you get your carb, um, carb, your fat fix and your protein fix, so it's just really nice and easy. Um, put the ice cubes in, just four ice cubes. Um, I need a spoon. So I'm gonna put two tea, uh, two tablespoons. So I haven't had the coffee yet, can't you? Um, I'm trying to give it up, so I'm limiting myself to one a day. I normally have it mid morning, so this time of the morning I can't really speak properly. But yeah, two tablespoons of coconut oil to get that fat content up. That's about two there. A tablespoon or about three quarters of a tablespoon of the sweetener in it because keto smoothies are a little bit more bland than normal smoothies normally people just shove them full of uh, banana and apples which is really nice but it's really really high in sugar so you're basically drinking I don't know uh, about two chocolate bars or something like that but just with more vitamins so it's better move that out of the way um, and we're gonna, so these are the, I believe say it, milled flax seeds. And if you look, they're really, really high. So the carbohydrates, 4.7, but the fiber is 30.6. So you can pretty much have as much as much flax seeds as you want and you're gonna be fine. Um, put that in, one in there. And bit of hemp milk. I'll probably do that at the end. Um, good hemp milk. Hello, I'm good hemp milk. I'm very good as opposed to the bad hemp milk, which is bad because it gets you high. Um, <laughs> right, and this is one thing I didn't mention. Um, the BCA A powder. It's uh, branch chain amino acids. Um, and this is really good if you do a lot of exercise. So I use it and it keeps my muscles intact. Um, so I forgot to mention that when we're talking about it. This is completely optional. I I like it. it I think I think it does help with my workouts. And I was using it before I was keto. So I'm put a tablespoon of that in. Um, I think it really does help my my muscle mass um, keep intact. But it's completely up to you. It's optional that one. Um, and then we have the vegan powder, vegan protein powder. So we're gonna put one or two scoops. In, in this, I think one would be alright to be honest. I don't need to go overboard. There we go. I'll do one and a half, let's compromise. One and a half scoops because then you've got a really good protein hit first thing in the morning. So we've got high fat with coconut oil, high protein with the protein powder, and it is all in there and it's ready to go. Um, and now this is where I will top it up with some hemp milk, so it'll be about half a cup of hemp milk goes in there. Screw that on. And there we have our smoothie ready to go. Good to do it for a long time to make sure all the berries uh, really get broken down and all the fat gets blended in, otherwise it's a bit rank. And there we have a nice pink smoothie.
mixed berry smoothie. And it's always good to give it a quick taste just to make sure it's sweet enough before you put this in the wash. So like, just taste it quickly. That's lush, so that's fine. Um, yay, you've now made your smoothie. Ta-da, congratulations, you've made your smoothie. It's really nice. Ah, oh, that's lush. Um, I think some people might like it sweeter, so you could put a couple of tablespoons of that into your smoothie if you want it sweeter. But to be honest, as you um, become fat adapted and you're using um, the keto diet more, you're going to find that your taste for sugar will become really strong. So if you do have some berries in a smoothie, they actually make it really sweet and you'll really like it. And it'll feel like, I don't know, double the amount of smoothies. That's what I find anyway. So you've got your breakfast to go. Um, drink it all down and if you're still not satisfied after this make yourself a keto coffee another habit you're going to have to get used to um on this journey is when you do start to crave stuff instead of car it might be you might think you're craving carbohydrates but actually you're craving fat because maybe you haven't eaten enough fat in a day so having something like an avocado or something with coconut oil on or something or nuts that are high in fat and low in carbs Will actually satisfy that craving more but yeah so well done on your first vegan keto smoothie enjoy and see you at lunchtime bye hello uh welcome to the office dun, dun, dun. um yeah it's not long to lunchtime but i'm really hungry um and i haven't got time to eat right now like a meal because i'm in the middle of working um online uh, um so what I've done is I've just went downstairs and I've got 50 grams of black olives. I put them into a glass and they're really tasty and they're really low in carbs and it's a really good snack. And I also had a 30 gram portion of peanuts. Um, and those peanuts are high in fat and high in protein and these are low in carb. And I think they're reasonably high in fat because they make olive oil from them. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? But yeah, just a quick idea for snacks in between meals. See you at lunch. I'm so hungry. It's lunchtime and today we have a really simple, quick lunch to make. It's um, two portobello mushrooms or wide cap mushrooms as some people call them and two really small avocados. So let's get started. So all we're going to use is these two mushrooms and it's about 130 grams of mushrooms and, uh, sorry, 200 grams of mushrooms, 130 grams of avocado, and some cold pressed rapeseed oil, and some Himalayan salt, and some garlic. That's all you need. So, what you wanna do is just get that heated up to a nice temperature, um, and then pop the mushrooms on. ta -da. And when they're on, because obviously you wanna make it fatty, and these bits here, pour like a tablespoon of oil in there. Okay, now these will steam quite a lot, so it's really useful to have one of these if you have it. Not everyone has it, this is the first place I've stayed with that does have it. So that's going to stop it from steaming up the whole place. When this oil gets really hot, it really does stink. And after you've put the oil, on the mushrooms, you can then sprinkle the garlic. So we're kind of making garlic mushrooms, which is lush. Oh, whoops, that was way too much. And the salt. And if you've got an extractor fan, put it on. Sorry if that's too loud, but I'll just talk louder. So put that on there. Um, you wanna have it on medium heat, I think this is too hot. So while they're cooking, you just want to get a bowl and mash up your avocados. So let's put them in there. You can get a fork. 
and if your avocados are ripe, it's just so easy to mash them up. Avocados, you can do pretty much anything with avocados, and it's really important, I think it's important to remember to put salt and possibly a bit of lemon in avocados because it just makes them taste so much nicer. They are really nice anyway, on their own. Okay, so now we've done that. I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic in, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And lots of salt. Um, and some pepper, wherever the pepper is. What did I do with the pepper? Oh, there it is. Right in front of my face. And by now, it's probably time to flip your mushrooms. Well, one thing I forgot to mention is <laughs> cutting these bits off will help in the cooking process. Just cook them on the side because they stick out loads more. There we go. And you can just flip them over. Flip them around so they can keep cooking. close to being ready, put some spinach in and it makes it really, really nice. Okay, so we've just got to wait probably about three minutes for these to be ready and um, I'll show you again when we put the spinach in. Hello again. Okay, so they're cooking and they're really loud and they're splitting everywhere, which is horrible. So now I'm going to put um, in this bit of oil here, Nice little spinach that we can use to put on top of the mushrooms when they're cooked. Now they're basically nearly ready. So you want to get your plate ready? Um, so I would say that they're actually ready. They don't take long at all. I can hold things in about five minutes. Spinach on top of the mushrooms. There, and there. Like that. Put the lid back on that to contain it. You can save the oil um, to use for something else. It's like nice garlicky mushroomy oil, so that'd be really nice later on. Um, and just spoon your avocado on top like that. And it's such a basic, easy meal, and trust me, it tastes lush. So it may not look like much, but because there's so much fat in this meal, you will feel really full up from it. Um, and it will really start to tell your body that that is your main fuel source now. So it'll help you get out of that keto flu. Um, that is it, basically. Ta-da! Keto lunch number two. And I've made a complete mess. Whoops. Um, but yeah, enjoy. And I'm sure this is going to fill the uploads. Um, and it's so, so quick. The whole thing I'm done in like 15 minutes. So it's such a quick meal to make. Hope you enjoyed it. So after the day before yesterday's half failure of keto bread buns or rolls, uh, I thought I'd try to make some other ones today and these ones are from a website called herbivorepost.com and they're called vegan keto sandwich bread 
Um, and it used pretty much the same ingredients as last time, but hopefully they turn out better. Follow me. So the ingredients that we have for this one is um, 300 grams of almond flour or ground almonds, uh, 150 grams of chia seeds, some xanthan gum, some tahini, some colon care, otherwise known as psyllium husk, and some yeast. So let's get started. So the first step for making the bread is mixing the tahini and water together uh, and then add yeast and the chia seeds and you have to leave it for 20 minutes which gives time for the chia seeds to absorb all of the water. So I've got this tahini that I had to mix together because it's separated and it took ages. Um, so sorry if that happens to you too. Sucks for you. Um, so I'm putting 100 grams into here. Oh, a bit too much. Yeah, 103 is good enough. Um, and I'm gonna get some more water to add to it. Mark? Yeah? How many milliliters of water are in a liter? 100. 100 milliliters of water in a liter. <laughs> Why are you asking me? I'm rubbish at stuff. Like Isn't there a thousand? Isn't one litre a thousand milliliters? Possibly. So 800 loads, isn't it? Yeah. And then we have to um, put in 160 grams of chia seeds and two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I'm actually going to get a whisk again. Let's use this pointless thing. Yay! Mark, where did you put the whisk? Which drawer? There's no whisk under the kettle. I can't use the weird one. Oh wait, it's alright, it's too late now. Too late. So we've got the 160 grams of chia seeds, so we're going to mix them in. And again, that goes really lumpy, so I'm going to get this thing again. They're a really good thing to add to water, just normal water that you take around with you every day, um, just to get an extra source of protein. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we've got the yeast, and that is two and a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. There we go. Okay, so now we have to leave that for 20 minutes. Uh, or until the chia is ready. Um, I'm just going to leave it for 20 minutes if that's what it says. So let's set my timer. Cool, so I'm going to set that to one side and while that's getting ready, I'm going to mix in the drying things. So we've got our metal mixing bowl. Um, let's 
says mix the almond flour, psyllium husks and gum with salt. So we've got these bags again. One bag is 150 and this recipe calls for 300 grams. So So is that done? And how much xanthan is that? 10 grams of xanthan gum. So that's a tablespoon again. So 10 grams is typically a tablespoon and five grams is typically a teaspoon if you don't have scales. And then we need to do 100 grams of psyllium husk. So if we put all of this on the scales, and then press zero tear, even though there's stuff in it, we can add things to it. Um, it won't recognize what's already in there. So we need to now put 100 grams of sealing husk. This is gonna make loads of bread, the deal. And also salt, <coughs> two teaspoons of salt. So I'm gonna mix this with a fork. Just mix it all through. Make sure there's no lumps and things like that. If you have got loads of lumps, you can use a sieve and sift it, but that's really boring. It takes ages. So hopefully you haven't got lumps. Um, but yeah, so I will be back in about 15 minutes to mix it all together. Hello, um, so I'm so sorry, but I just went into a world of my own and I started mixing it together without videoing it. So I tipped all of the stuff that was in here, the chia seeds and the mixture, in with the almond um, flour mixture and psyllium husk. And now you've got to knead it with your hands. And I really do hate <laughs> psyllium husk for how it gets everywhere, but let's knead this all together. And I've got uh, a couple of bread trays ready, and hopefully this will fit in one, but I thought it wouldn't, so we'll soon see. So, this looks quite mixed to me, and I think it's all going to fit in one tin. So I have my one tin here. That's why you can use that to grease it. Um, so let's put it all in, see if it works. There we go, we have our hopefully vegan keto bread mixture. And the recipe says it's really dense and it's really filling. So, and I mean, this will last for a while. So like this is about 4.5 carbs per slice. So similar to those rolls, which is really cool. Okay, so now the recipe says to leave this for an hour to rise. Um, and then stick it in the oven. So I will see you later to put it in the oven. Oh, I've got to wash this crap off my hands. That does not look appealing, does it? <sighs> Gross. I've just got back from a nice walk and it's been about an hour. So I'm gonna see if the mixture has done what it's supposed to do and rise in a warm place. Let's have a look. We're gonna go into the uh, Air in cupboard. So oh, yeah, it has. Oh wow. I shouldn't sound so surprised. I mean, yes, I knew it would. Yes, yes. So here we have the risen thing. So now we can go and put it in the oven. Ooh, exciting! Yay. It smells kind of nice too. <laughs> so now it's in the oven. Leave it for one to two hours until it is two hundred and twenty-five degrees in the middle. I have no way of knowing that because I haven't got a temperature, so I'm just gonna put it in for one and a half hours and then put a knife in it and see how hot it is. 
Uh, but yeah, I think that's probably the best way that most normal people do it. So yeah. Um, enjoy. I haven't shrunk, I'm just kneeling down. <laughs> um, because I'm going to check the bread. So it's been in for about an hour and 15 minutes. And it smells really good. Um, so let's have a look, see if it is ready. Dun, dun, dun. Let's not burn ourselves. It's not the best idea to do. Oh, how can I do this one handed? One sec. Hmm. I've got to put the phone down. Wow. Okay, let's have a look at it. So I've stuck the knife in the middle and I'm just going to test it on my wrist. Oh, that is very hot. Um, I'm going to leave it in for a little bit longer though. Because it says up to two hours. So. I don't think it's 220 degrees in the middle yet. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in for another half an hour. The moment of truth. Has it deflated or is it edible? Who knows? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, it's still there in one piece. Feels nice and hard. And look now. Look at that. That is awesome. Um, if I move this out of the way. And that is why you should grease it, it just peels off, see? Wow, that's really cool. Hot, 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 hot. Um, so I'm gonna see if there's a tray or something. I'm just gonna leave that there to cool down. And we, sh oh, that looks like a success to me. It feels, doesn't feel hollow at all. It feels solid. Once it's cooled down, we'll slice it and have a look. I hope that yours has turned out as good as that. Selfie time. Now it's dinner time, and like I said earlier, we're going to be making cauliflower mash and well, bangers and mash. Cauliflower bangers and mash. Um, the bangers are Linda McCartney's bangers, and they're not actually that high in carbs on the back. It says per two sausages. Um, it's 6.9 grams of carbs, but then the fiber is 4.6. Take it away, it's not much at all. Um, I, eat, I eat these all the time, it never kicks me out of keto, so I have three for a portion. Um, but yeah, let's get started making cauliflower bangers and mash. We've got the sausages, uh, we're going to use three of those, and we've got half a cauliflower, which is like 300 grams. Um, and we've got 60 grams of onion, which is one tiny, tiny little onion. And then we've got 90 grams of some kind of spread. Um, now, so the first thing we're going to do, oh, and that's my electrolyte drink. So, yum, yum. Mm. Um, hopefully you've been keeping up with your hydration today and you should be feeling really good. I'm feeling quite good today. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in keto yet or not, but I'm definitely feeling like my body's switching. And I hope you guys are feeling good too, but keep up with those drinks. But anyway, so first thing we've got to do is move the cauliflower onto a baking tray because we're going to bake the cauliflower in the oven for 20 minutes. Um, and then about five minutes before the end of that, we're going to fry the onion in a pot like that and put the margarine into the pot too. And then, oh yeah, I forgot we're going to add a little bit of almond milk. Uh, oh, sorry, soya milk, organic soya milk. Organic soya milk is okay to heat up. It doesn't become carcinogenic, but it's the non-organic kind that does. Um, so yeah, so let's just pop that on here. So just spread it out um, nicely, it's all chopped up so it will cook well. So we've got a baking tray here, and we're gonna put, I'm putting all the sausages in, because once again, I'm cooking for Mark. He's so lazy, no, not really. He just can't do it, because I'm doing this show, so he kinda can't cook at the moment. 
Uh, he's not on keto, by the way, as I mentioned earlier. But he often... So I'm making this for him tonight, but he's, I'm going to be making him normal bangers and mash. That's real love, when you're making someone the carbs that you love, but not eating them yourself. So this is all going to go into the oven now for like 20 minutes. Um, so I'll be back in 20 minutes. Now I have uh, just put the onion and the, some oil. And remember that oil from lunch, from the avocado um, on mushrooms? I've used that. And a tiny bit of um, rapeseed oil. Um, I'm just going to cook that on a really low temperature. Well, not really low, medium temperature. Like, And so what we're going to do is we're going to cook this while the broccoli is in the oven. And once this is kind of, it's okay if this even burns a little bit, like let it ca like become kind of caramelised or whatever, it's really nice. Um, and then we're going to add the butter, or the margarine, um, to it. And while it's cooking, also add some uh, garlic and some salt and anything else that you really want to add flavour to it really. And while that's all cooking, um, get your blender, your smoothie maker ready, because, ta -da, because once the cauliflower is done, you're going to be blending it all together. You're going to pour the mixture that you're cooking there, um, and that's going to go in there. Then the cauliflower and everything <coughs> is going to all squeeze into one of these, and you're going to blend it. And that's how you make the cauliflower mash, and it's really, really nice. Everyone that's tried it would be like, oh my god, that's so good. So, yeah, it's good. And don't forget to pour, um, I put the margarine in, pour a bit of soy milk in there. Not that much, there you go. Let that simmer away. So, we have the. They're not quite ready, but I've just taken them out to get these. I'm going to show you how we make it into mash. Um, cool. So, they're a bit hot, but just plonk them in yourself. Um, and it doesn't matter if they're not 100% cooked through, like taste one, see if it's soft, but um, we can put them back into the pan with the oil once it's all mixed to heat it up, but like just to keep it warm until everything's ready. And now, these pans are so cool because they've actually got little pouring bits, so this should go well. And pour this in there. It's basically like making a smoothie, but a completely different kind of one. Awesome. Sometimes you have to judge it, see if you think there's going to be enough liquid to make it into um, a thingy majiggy. So, put that on there. Move that out of the way. Here we go. It's, see, there is liquid in there. You kind of have to just judge it. I'm just going to show you. So we now have some kind of smooth mash making substance. There we go, I've just taken the top off. It's not perfect mash, but it is mash. See, it's like stuck right up there. Um, and we're gonna pour it into here. Just gonna scrape out the bits. Okay, I've got on a really low heat now, and I've added some more salt and pepper and garlic. And it's looking really good. I tasted it and I thought it should be a little bit more salty. Um, but it's so good, it's so high in fat, and that's going to keep it warm until the skanker carb version really. And it's not skank, it's lush. But I just can't eat it. Um, there we go. So, just got to wait for the sausages, make the gravy, <coughs> and it's going to be ready. So, I'll see you in a bit. And here is the finished. Um, 
cauliflower, mashed potato and sausage. And as you can see, it looks just like real mashed potato. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and I forgot to say um, to thank um, Renee or Renny, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, from um, herbivorepost.com for her amazing vegan, uh, vegan keto bread recipe. Well done for making it through your second day and hopefully you're feeling a bit more awake now or if not, just keep on those electrolyte drinks. Um, but yeah, well done. You've done really well and keep going. And if you feel crap, just keep going because it will get better. And as soon as you switch to burning fat, you're going to feel amazing. So just keep going. Trust me, it will get better. If it doesn't get better after like two weeks, then that's time to start questioning things. But until then, keep at it. Thanks. Bye. Say bye, Mark. Bye. <laughs>